Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. We're now rapidly approaching the start of the astronomical spring and in recent days it has felt quite warm around here at times. So what about the next two weeks? I'll start with a look at the picture across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT Tuesday the 15th. At the outset, for some outbreaks of rain in the northwest, elsewhere it's a dry picture. In the short term, though, the risk of rain extends across much of the UK. It then becomes drier again as high pressure builds and the weekend is looking settled for virtually the whole of the country. We've got high pressure centred to the east, the northeast, and winds coming in from a southeasterly direction. Atlantic weather fronts here being held well at bay. That pattern continues through Sunday into Monday as well, but then outbreaks of rain push up from the south during Tuesday, and over high ground there's a little bit of sleet or snow being shown on this sequence at least. So it's mostly dry through much of a week but some rain early on and then potentially again towards the end of the period. In terms of air mass temperatures I think it's just worth having a quick look at the sequence. Once again it runs from 18 GMT Tuesday the 15th the greens over southern and central regions indicating the highest uh, upper level air temperatures, the light blues further north suggesting cooler air. And really it's quite a mixed picture but the thing that's worth paying attention to is the weekend, Saturday the 18th on this uh, sequence, the UK is under yellows and oranges indicating the possibility of it turning quite warm, certainly very spring-like. Then colder or cooler air at least returns from the east and it finishes with quite a mixed uh, pattern there. So for our variations as we go through the week, I would say that on the whole above average temperatures at this level, so these are forecasts for about 1500 meters above sea level, but some colder intervals are possible, especially later on. Therefore, the impact it all has on two meter temperatures for ones which we experience. 15 GMT, Saturday the 19th, we've got the potentially warm air aloft and temperatures down to the ground level are responding quite nicely. 14s, 15s, 16s across much of the UK. In fact, some of the highest values there are being shown in northeastern Scotland. But Monday the 21st, as that cooler air moves in, now values are down to 7, 8 or 9 Celsius, 10 there in southern Wales. Quite a big drop as it turns, as, as, as it goes back towards the average or perhaps even a little bit below it. Also, with high pressure often dominating the scene, there is the potential for clear periods at night that leads to a chance of frost. Just as an example, here's the forecast minimums for 09 GMT Monday the 21st, widely down to around 0 Celsius or 1 Celsius with a widespread frost resulting. So daytime temperatures often close to or above the average, although possibly colder on some days later on. Night temperatures lower with patchy frost and possibly fog too. That's what the uh, GFS data suggests and it's really supported quite well by the MoGreps ensemble. London chart suggests respectable daytime temperatures for much of the first week, perhaps colder on one or two occasions. Also there is the possibility of some chilly nights, minimums are down to around 3 Celsius and of course, once you get into more rural areas, it will be colder, a greater risk of frost. Going up to Glasgow and to begin with, maximums around 8, 9, 10 Celsius, but then it turns a lot milder for a few days. 15s or 16s are being shown there. Nights generally a little bit cooler than they were in London, so a greater risk of frost all very typical of course, the frost risk tending to be higher 
as you head northwards across the UK. Rainfall. Days 0 to 5. On the left, it's the forecast from the European ECM model. On the right, the American GFS. The distribution on both of them is quite similar. Wettest in the northwest, also in East Anglia and central and southeastern England. I think, though, most of the rain which has been forecast in those regions falls during the first day or two, it then becomes mainly dry. Moving forwards to the 10 day charts, the distribution again quite similar. Wettest in the north west, where the totals have continued to increase. Drier across northern England, Wales, southwestern counties, and even northern Ireland. So, quite a mixed picture, reasonable consistency there between the two models. Somewhat unusual, perhaps, with the rainfall really being focused on the southeast and the northwest. So, do the other deterministic models support that GFS scenario at the end of the first week? Just to recap, this is what it was showing. A low pressure here moving northwards across the UK, high pressure centered to the east, ready to build back. The Canadian model at the same time, similar story, high pressure to the east. The German icon, this has high pressure centre to the east, but it's extending its influence further west across the UK, so a drier setup there. The European ECM model, um, similar, I think, to the ICOM, the low pressure probably just pulling away northwards there, so affecting us a little bit earlier than the uh, GFS was suggesting. Finally, the UK Met Office. Generally, a similar pattern there, high pressure to the east, low pressure to the west, the southwest. I think good agreement really there between the deterministics, of course, differences in the details. The big picture looks fairly well set. High pressure having a lot of influence, perhaps just for time there, areas of low pressure bringing a renewed risk of rain towards the end of the first week, but beyond that, the signal is that high pressure would be building back. So, on to week two and a look at the trends and the probabilities. Starting with the 16 day GFS plot for London, across the top, air mass temperatures. The signal is quite a straightforward one this time, above average. The thick black line there, the 30 year norm, is below most of the individual runs throughout the period and it's also therefore well below the thick purple line, the ensemble mean. There are a few colder runs in the mix, not totally discounted, but generally air mass temperatures staying above that 30 year norm. Across the bottom, rainfall, not many spikes showing up, perhaps one or two more towards the very end. A dry picture being painted, according to this data at least. Going up to Glasgow, Air mass temperatures, well, it's a similar story to the London chart. Above the average, there's probably a bigger spread there. Nonetheless, most of the individual runs are staying above that thick black line for the majority of the period. Uh, the rain spikes across the bottom. There are more of them than there were on the London chart. Not very many, though. So even in the northwest, it's a relatively dry picture, according to this. The two meter temperature data table for London. Each column represents the forecast maximums from all the runs in the ensemble on a given day. Um, there's some orange there, which goes up to around 40%, just over. Those are runs going for 16 to 20 Celsius. And the light yellows, which make up the majority in a number of, on a number of days, are 11 to 15 Celsius. It's therefore, it's mild down at the surface. We can expect some very spring-like conditions, possibly even rather warm on one or two days. I wouldn't completely discount the chance of 21 Celsius being reached through this period. Now, going up to Glasgow, uh, the yellows make up the majority for the first three or four days. The 11 to 15 Celsius is and light green there 
6 to 10. So all in all, temperatures are lower than they were in southern England, but still, I think, very respectable for the time of the year. Perhaps a cooling trend more notable there towards the end. The mean surface level pressure data table for York indicates that high pressure will really be dominant for the first three or four days at least. Uh, the orange, which makes up the bulk of the uh, columns here to begin with, is, for, is, is generated from runs which are forecast in surface pressure of between 1,026 and 1,040 millibars, so significantly above the average. There is a downwards trend there towards the end. The greens begin to increase, 996 millibars to 1,010 millibars. Low pressure perhaps once again therefore starting to become more of a player across the UK. All in all though, I think the message here is high pressure is dominant. And that's supported by the Mean surface level pressure plot using the GEFS mean uh, 10 days ahead, Friday the 25th of March. The UK is there, slap bang under a big area of high pressure. At the same time, the European ECM has a slightly different scenario. Not that different though, with high pressure being the major feature. It's just centered further south quite probably. Going back to the GEFS to see the 10 to 15 day pressure anomaly chart, UK just here, and this orange shading, which is indicating a strong positive anomaly. So pressure well above the 30 year average, according to the ensemble mean, through days 10 to 15 when averaged out. It looks quite settled for much of the second week over the UK as a whole, if this data is correct. So to summarize, week one, often dry, but there will be some rain early on. It could be quite heavy. And then perhaps it turns wet again towards the end. Daytime temperatures, often above the average, but there could be some cooler or even colder days in the mix, especially later. With high pressure being dominant, clear skies could lead to an ongoing uh, risk of patchy frost and fog by night. But I think it will be, it may not be particularly widespread. Week two, the high pressure uh, dominated scenario is favored. Therefore, a good deal of dry periods, especially in the south and the east. Daytime temperatures often above the average, a chance of it turning rather warm. As I mentioned, 21 Celsius, not entirely out of the question. Despite that, clear nights still give the chance of patchy frost and fog. And towards the very end, there could be an increasing risk of rain as pressure begins to fall. So, there we have it. All in all, a good deal of settled weather, fingers crossed. Possibly quite warm at times, certainly feeling spring-like on occasion, I imagine. Still the chance of some colder days in the mix, or at least cooler ones. Possibly also an ongoing risk of nighttime frosts and fog, but maybe, as I mentioned there, not terribly widespread. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, found it useful. As ever, if you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.